called about 20 minutes ago, in fact, and the call came from a very close family member, and they wanted us to know that, that Larry had transitioned, and they wanted us to be able to let people know in a very personal way how much he cared for this city and how much he really thanked all of those who supported him and supported his wife and supported him with prayers. And they, they have a statement that I want to read to you from the family. The family statement reads this way. It is with deep and profound sadness that we announced the transitioning of legendary Larry Paul Langford. Langford, 72 years of age, transitioned shortly after 6 p.m. this evening at Brookwood Princeton Hospital, surrounded by his girl, wife, Mrs. Melva P. Langford, family, and a few close friends. Although the appropriate words cannot express the loss of our beloved Larry, we find comfort in memories, his wisdom, faith, and courage. Let the work he's done speak for him. And Jack and Sherry, I can tell you that when I got a chance to visit with him, they had moved him from the cardiac intensive care unit um, up to a suite. He ironically was in the same suite that Fred Shuttlesworth transitioned from this earth. And it was ironic because it was Larry Lankford who fought to get his name, the Birmingham Airport name, Dr. Fred Shuttlesworth. In, indeed, Art, and as you talk, and I know you all had a special relationship. I re remember when he renamed the airport and he told me, Sherry, it was just the stroke of a pen. That's, that's all it took. He, he was a, a favorite son of the city, uh, certainly uh, coming home from, from a prison, uncompassionate release just now. But we know that through the years while he was incarcerated, that there were groups of people in the community who had been trying to get him released. Absolutely. And, and even in these last uh, few weeks and when everything, everything unfolded on Christmas Eve, and I, and I got that call that that he was actually um, home and coming home. It was um, a number of people from um, Congresswoman Terry Sewell's office to the, the district attorney, the U.S. attorney for the Northern District of, of Alabama and U.S. District Court Judge Scott Kugler, who really was um, the one who actually signed that order uh, for his release and, and working with the Federal Bureau of Prisons because that he was terminally ill. And, and I can tell you, it, it was... He, he was looking so good when I first got a chance to see him, Sherry. He, he was sitting up, he was eating, he was talking, he was laughing, he was upbeat. And then Friday, this past Friday, um, things turned for the worse, and, and, and they called everyone to the hospital and said, come down to say goodbye. And then Sunday night, he had a good night. I, I talked to um, his sister-in-law yesterday. She said, Artie had a good night last night. And so... Um, and then tonight we transition. Art, the day of his conviction in Tuscaloosa back in 2009, Larry Langford told my dad that the happiest he had ever been in his life was when he and Melva could only afford one hamburger and they would share it. And that's the happiest time in their lives when they just had each other. Larry Langford, a complicated figure in Birmingham history. Uh, you and he share a career, among other things, and now this friendship that lasted until uh, his passing. How how will Larry Langford be remembered by you, and how should he be remembered by the people of Birmingham and Fairfield? Uh, Larry will be remembered, Jack, in, in so many ways for caring, for being a visionary. And, 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 and it's, it's ironic that he got a chance to, they were hoping that he would get a chance to go home. He left the prison, that was important. He got to the hospital, they were hoping that he would leave the hospital and then get a chance to see some of the things that came into fruition because of his work and because of his vision. So they only got a chance to show him pictures of Crossplex, pictures of mm -hmm. Regents Field, pictures of Uptown, pictures of all the things that, that came into fruition because of things that he believed could happen in Birmingham. And it was through his vision and through his hard work. I think that's what he'll be remembered by most, Jack, being a visionary who cared for this city. Art Franklin now uh, just recapping for us the passing of former Birmingham Mayor Larry Langford dead today at the age of 72.
uh, just coming home. We will have much more uh, on his life and his legacy for the city of Birmingham on the CBS 42 News at 10 o'clock. And this is a picture, perhaps one of the last images we'll see of Larry Langford, pictured with Terry Sewell there, one of the Congress, uh, the Congresswoman, along with Senator Doug Jones and other lawmakers who fought in these final days to have him released from prison on compassionate release. And as Art mentioned, Judge Scott Kugler, the same man who signed his sentencing 10 years ago, signed those documents of compassionate release so that Mayor Langford could be home where he would spend his final days. And as Sherry said, we'll remember him fully tonight on the CBS 42 News at 10. Until then, you can get the latest on CBS42.com. Uh, and again, that, those pictures you're looking at, uh, Congresswoman Terry Sewell and former Birmingham Mayor Larry Langford, uh, taken on December 29th when he was uh, brought back home from prison uh, to be with family and friends in his last days. Join us on the CBS42 News app to read that full statement that Art read a moment ago. And if you're just joining us, that breaking news, Larry Langford dead at the age of 72. For Sherry Jackson, I'm Jack Royer. This has been a CBS42 special report. This has been a CBS 42 special report. Local coverage you can count on.